Susan and I do some of this sewing for Nearly New Cashmere. As you can see I'm quite old and I've been sewing for a very long time. My first sewing projects seem quite strange now. I grew up on a small farm in the Lake District and there was never very much money. The baby chick crumbs used to come in great big cotton bags. And when those bags were washed and taken to bits, it gave a really strong cotton fabric. And my first go to work on mother's old hand sewing machine was making aprons out of these cotton bags. And I progressed from there to dresses and things. And it was a really old machine and you had to sit. It was a handle one. And you had to sit with a screwdriver at the side because you were whizzing away. And then everything went slack. So you had to tighten it up and set off again. So that's how I came to sew. And then I had four children and I sewed for them and I've just kept sewing. If you're going to have a go at making some accessory items, practice on your scraps, get your tension right on your machine because that is the big thing. If you can reduce your pressure foot pressure, do so. Try a, a straight stitch introducing half a zigzag because a straight stitch in itself doesn't have any stretch. Introducing a very slight zigzag still gives the appearance of a straight stitch in the seam but introduces a little bit of stretch and don't try to use a very narrow seam allowance it's better to have a bigger seam allowance and then afterwards chop a bit off have your iron nearby a two dot setting with a bit of steam and press as you go that's really important press as you go do a three point press, press your seam on one side, turn it over, press your seam on the other side and then open it out and press with the point of the iron along the stitches with the seam open. That will ensure you get nice edges to whatever you're sewing. Now then, cashmere irons beautifully. Most wool, as well as cashmere, needs a touch of ironing. Now don't be afraid of ironing cashmere. You need a two dot setting on your iron, which is the wool setting, and you need a little bit of steam. Now you don't want absolutely gusts and gusts of red hot steam for a long period, but you do need a little bit of steam. Now press lightly with the iron. You don't have to really go like this. Press lightly with your iron and just hover, just hover a bit if it's not coming out and then press lightly. And then if you've got a stubborn area, which you might have on a seam, where the intersection of seams are on a neck warmer, if you've pressed your seams open, snipped off your corners inside, and pressed everything flat from the inside, and then you fold it over, although there's still bulk in there, and this is a chunky one, then there is just a case for a little bit more pressure here. And it's a bit like in tearing when you use a wooden clapper. So you've got a bit of steam in your iron, and just go just carefully and then turn it over and go and just just for a few seconds and then while it's still damp finger press it and you'll get those bumps out so don't be frightened of ironing just do it with respect don't have it too hot don't have loads of steam don't have sustained hard pressure light and gently as you go how do i identify the different qualities of cashmere the first reason is the feel of the cashmere. It just feels softer, more luxurious altogether. The thinness is not necessarily an indication of quality. I have here a luxury snood with a very fine, thin lining, which is absolutely beautiful cashmere. I think it's the same as cotton and linen. When you have a long staple fibre, it's the longness of the fibres that makes it luxurious. If it's thin and loosely knit, that is often not as good a quality. This is very fine, very closely knit, feels beautifully soft. A lot of it is to do with feel. It just feels more luxurious and soft and has a, a sort of depth to the fabric, a sort of spring back feel to it rather than just being flat. That's not very scientific, but those are some of my top tips. I hope that's helpful.